just trying to make sure that everything's running, make sure that everything's going good. Hope everybody's doing well today. All right. It appears that we are not uh, casting to YouTube or something. Oh, no, we are. I'm just not able to get the multi-chat stream going. There's some sort of issue with our with our normal uh, setup that we use. So apologies for that. Uh, when we get that fixed, I'll make sure that we uh, can access all your questions at the same time. But in the meantime, hello and welcome to Noman's Art Jam on a Wednesday mornings. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is doing a couple different things. I actually wanted to uh, see if we could maybe introduce a little bit of structure to our art jams today. Uh, we've kind of been doing this a couple of times as sort of like a test. Um, and today what I want to do is basically treat the first uh, 20 minutes of just kind of like getting getting things up and going, getting kind of a little bit of a warm up. Uh, then I'll spend about an hour uh, working on some, a specific project. Then I'll spend a little bit of time doing some Q&A and then we'll jump into another project after that. So sorry, the trying to get our uh, chat to load up, and it seems like it doesn't want to. So I won't be able to answer many or any of your questions right away. Sorry about that in advance, but uh, we'll get it sorted as soon as we can. Right. Let's see, I was also thinking about maybe trying to put some sort of a structure in here. So, in case you guys haven't joined before, uh, this is what we're we've been working on over the several uh, streams that we've been working on. Um, you know, working through the fan art six challenge. So these are the ones that I've been doing. Uh, today we'll be focusing a little bit on Bosque. Today I spent some more time. If you joined one of the previous streams before, you may have seen uh, I've been working on this character. Uh, since the beginning of the stream, uh, and this is kind of where I had left off at the last stream, and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't very happy with it, to be pretty frank. Um, it was kind of a situation where I just wasn't really loving how it was looking, uh, and just wanted to keep, to just make it a little bit better. And so I spent some time off stream, uh, working on the head, and just really uh, getting it to a little bit better place for me and looking at some more of the, the, the movie reference and stuff like that. And so I've kind of gotten into a place where I'm somewhat happy with the, at least where the head shape is going and the T-shape and just kind of a general direction. So what I wanted to do today is spend a little bit of time um, doing, um, so like some detail pass stuff. So I think we'll spend some time on that in a little bit. Uh, for now, I'm actually just going to make, let's like see if we can do this. We'll do this live. Uh, I'm going to add some text here. So we're going to say like 20 mins. You guys can't see this yet. Warm up. And then we'll do, what does this work? We'll do one hour detailing. We'll do 30, 40 minutes. work in QA and then we'll do one hour new project reveal this maybe I know you guys can't see any of this yet but that's okay
trying to find the right font, which is always a challenge. Go ahead and lock that, and we'll set it to live. So I'm putting the uh, the expectations for what we're going to work on today. We're going to spend 20 minutes kind of warming up. Uh, we're going to spend an hour detailing Bosque. We're going to spend about 40 minutes continuing that, but also open up the, the chat a little bit for Q&A at that point. And then at the last hour of the stream, which will be from noon to 1 Pacific time, uh, I'll reveal kind of the next project that I'm going to be working on uh, here for what this last question mark character is going to be. And we'll start working on that as well. All right, now that we've got all that stuff set up and out of the way, hello, hope you guys are doing well. Looks like people are starting to filter in. Again, we're having some weird issue this morning with um, this weird issue with our multi-chat. So I can't see everybody's chats all at one time. So I'll, I'll attempt to bounce back and forth uh, best I can to, uh, you know, do the best I can with that. All right. All right, so warm-ups. Uh, one of the things I like to do on a warm-up very often, and I'm, I like kind of doing these, is just kind of sculpting from a sphere. So we'll spend about 10 minutes on this just to kind of get uh, get us moving today. Uh, and what I like to do is I just go into Tool, uh, Polysphere. You can load one of these up. And I kind of just like to explore shapes at this point. So I want to, you know, I'm going to turn Symmetry on, and I'm going to go down to the lowest resolution. I'm going to go into my geometry tab here and I'm going to delete higher. Try and one more time for that chat. I'm going to keep doing that every now and then. Um, and I'm just going to start sculpting. So I usually try to make something that's in a relative head shape. Just using the move tool here. Make something somewhat humanoid, maybe. Also, sometimes like switching to the brushes. There's a ton in ZBrush. If you hit B, there's a ton of brushes in here. But if you actually hit comma and go into brush, there's even more brushes in here. Each one of these folders has a lot of brushes in them. And the smooth brush has a smooth, stronger brush, which I really like because it works. Uh, it'll replace your smooth brush, and you can say okay. Uh, but it'll actually work really, really strong. Uh, and works kind of as a nice way to like plane something, uh, which is pretty cool. So I can like using this at early stages to almost like chisel off where some of these planes are going to go. All right, then maybe I'll add a subdivision level here and I'll just start sketching in. Uh, I kind of like this triangle shape, so I'm going to try to keep something in line with that. This little like drooping accident here, I think, is kind of interesting. So I'm going to accentuate that. And this is just kind of a warm up to get us moving.
little bit more of a subdivision level here. It reminds me of one of the older men from the Muppets right now. The guys that's always in the balcony. <laughs> I have folders and folders and folders of these different types of sketches that I kind of just have, uh, you know, just kind of exploring things. It's just, like, they're really just nice ways to like, yes, yeah, Stadler and Waldorf, Stadler and Waldorf. That's right. This for some reason reminds me of one of those. Um, I have sketches and sketches and like this in folders and it's just kind of a nice way to, you know, quickly get your brain going. Even if this isn't something you necessarily want to keep working on, you know, sometimes you make something and you're like, oh, this is an interesting idea, or I, maybe I do like this and I'll run with it for the future. Kind of give him this little mohawk situation. We'll get away from that. The uh, There's an element of this that almost feels like it could be like a giant as well. into a body again this goal isn't to make something finished this is just to kind of warm up so uh, what I'll do at this point or pretty soon to now is I'll um, dynamesh this Ooh. A little high res for me, and I bump that down to 64. Lose some of what I had in the face, which I'm not super stoked about. So we'll just leave it at 128. That smooth, stronger brush you'll see is super powerful. Like it's incredibly strong. It can be a little hard to control, but it's really good for for me for sculpting really early like this. The, back into sculpting.
and giant this morning. Well, kind of at this point when I feel like, okay, I could either spend a lot more time on this, um, finish it. Uh, sometimes if I'm enjoying the project, you know, if like I'm really f liking the direction that's going or, you know, maybe I'll spend, I'll kind of pivot and be like, all right, I'm just going to work on this for a bit. But for today, we're going to get back into detailing. And so one of the projects that I was, or the project that I want us to to work on today is my uh, the Bosque character, and I just want to spend some time and do do some alphas and do some detailing because that's something we haven't really uh, spent a lot of time on uh, here on the Art Jam. We've spent a lot of time doing things like this, right? We've done a lot of time sculpting from scratch. We've done a lot of concept work, done a lot of rendering work, um, but we haven't really spent too much time uh, doing detail work. Uh, and so that's kind of what I want to focus on for a, at least a little while on this character here. Well, not this character, but the other one. And now before I continue working on this, I'll just quickly do a, a save. I usually throw this in a bunch of a folder where I'll have all kinds of uh, sketches, right? So I just sketch, 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 and just have a bunch of these. So the giant. For example, I don't really know what this sketch is, but I'll load this one. This is a sketch that I ended up doing that ended up turning into something. This guy started with a head. I ended up making a little body for him and uh, made him a little outfit. So just things that happen to be in the folder of, of sketches. Uh, so today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on Bosk detailing, like I said, or at least for the next hour. So that's going to be basically uh, until uh, 11.20, uh, my time, Pacific time. Looks like our, our restream chat is finally working, so I can see all the chats at one time, which is excellent news. Uh, so I should be able to actually respond to anybody who has questions now, which is great. All right, so we are going to, first I wanted to look at some reference. So I have pulled up my reference folder here, which is just obviously a bunch of Bosque images. Uh, and if you look at a lot of his, his actual designs, he has some really large plating on his head. And pretty much all of these. Uh, this is some obviously some lizard reference, which is pretty cool. But a lot of the stuff on his head was really large, and I thought that was interesting, um, especially the original. But there's also a lot of really small elements here. And so what I was thinking we could do is, you know, some of them have gone more this alligator skin, which I kind of like, which is cool with these like uh, points, the serrated edge. But finding a way to transition the really large shapes into the smaller shapes is kind of what I want to find a way to do. And, and iguanas are actually a really good example of that because you'll see these really large shapes here. And then down in the eyes and like anywhere around where there's a lot of movement, uh, there's quite a bit of smaller scales. And that's obviously so that it can move, right? Which is cool. So I kind of want to explore some of that today. And I'll be using the images you see here as reference. One of the things that's cool about using you know, using nature reference, but like just looking at these photos in general, is that there's like a very clear, you can see these sort of patterns that start emerging, these lines that start emerging and, and start understanding that this is likely all for movement. So that's something I'm gonna wanna keep in mind when I start working on my own. This is a really beautiful shot. Like again, the transition from large to medium, small to, to large again, and then around the eyes, are, 
incredibly detailed and very, very small. So we're going to spend a little time detailing today, and I'm probably going to keep like this one up over here. All right. And while I'm getting this all set up, um, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, let me know if you got any questions. I'm going to be happy to answer them. Like you see, kind of here, uh, this is our schedule for today. So we're going to spend about an hour detailing. And then I'm going to try to address as many questions as I can in that 40 minute block. Uh, just because we tend to get a lot of questions, you know, about Nomen. We get a lot of questions about uh, portfolios. And I think it'll be easier to kind of collect all those at one time and try to answer them then. So I already see uh, Vladimir from YouTube. I see you uh, posting some questions. So I will try to answer those as, as quick as I can, but also I want to focus on some tips while detailing. All right, just had to mute my mic while I drank some water because I'm not a fan of listening to other people drink water. So, you know. So anyways, this is what we ended up last stream with POSC. This is where we are. This stream, I spent some time on it, which gives us a good kind of a starting ground to do detailing. Uh, so I'm really only going to focus uh, on this part of him today. Right? We're going to just focus on his head. We're going to focus on maybe his mouth but mostly just kind of the scaling around the head and how that's going to work. So I'm actually just going to hide pretty much everything else. there. All right. I'm going to, because it's just strange that that's sticking out. I'm just going to push it up there so I don't have to see it. Okay. We have about 200,000 polygons right now. And right now, uh, 200,000 polys isn't really going to be able, enough to get the shape, you know, some of the shapes and stuff that we're talking about, especially when we get into these details. So I want to kind of address a couple different things when it comes to doing, um, you know, scales and details in general. Uh, first things first, don't, it's, it's a really not a, a good idea to jump straight into details. So, you know, let's say we were at our previous resolution here and I just started kind of coming in and just sculpting these things. You would able, obviously you'd be able to, you know, get an idea of what it would look like, what the character would look like, but because the underlying form, all of this stuff underneath here is relatively soft and not really worked out. Uh, you're going to have a much more lumpy, um, not as quality result because the forms themselves aren't really resolved. So coming in here, my goal was to resolve many of the forms. And you'll even notice like some of the, some of them are a little sharper than I, you know, you might want. Uh, so some of these things around the eyes, right? All very planar. And what I mean by planar is like, you can see the peaks and the valleys of where things start, right? And that's kind of really what I'm looking for because as I start lumping and putting more more information on it, um, it's just going to get, that is actually just going to get quote unquote worse, right? You're only going to see more of that. Uh, you can obviously go back down subdivision levels and that's something we'll likely be doing at a certain point um, to get a little bit more detail or get more form in something that, that has detail on it. Uh, but right now I'm just wanting to double check that most of my forms are solid before I start working on them. And to me, they're feeling like we're in a pretty good spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to, uh, kind of visualize for you guys what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that this area here, something like this, 
and all the way up here will be larger scales. Not unlike kind of what we've been seeing uh, in the iguanas. And then I'll use a larger strip around the teeth, which we'll have here. But the rest of it, I'm going to try to do some of this very fine detailing things. So what that means is we're not going to be able to just coat the whole thing in one pattern. Uh, if you go in, you think if you get B, let's see, B, there used to be some scale brushes in here, but I believe that they ended up going away. So if you ever notice that a scale brush or a brush that you really like in ZBrush is gone, it's not, it's likely not actually gone. Uh, it's likely just up here in the light box. This is what that's called. Um, is when you hit comma, you can open this up, you can go to brushes, and you'll notice that there's still a scales folder. So there's a bunch of these scales in here. Now, it's nice that ZBrush has a bunch of these, and you'll find this for all different types of things, right? You'll find this for uh, patterns, you'll find this for noise brushes, you'll find this for clay, decoration brushes, all this kind of stuff. And it's really great that those are there because uh, it gives us a really nice starting point, but it doesn't mean that it's going to fix all our issues. So first, we're going to see what these are. So it looks like this one has some sort of a, like a, sort of like a soft scale, like it doesn't really overlap super heavily. I don't know if that's going to be very useful to me. Let me see. So C is interesting. It looks like all of them have this on. Maybe if it's a little smaller and I Oh, I'm going to change my smooth back to the normal smooth. I, I turned that on. Uh, I, oh, it, it wouldn't be in this folder. It wouldn't be in this folder. It would be in this folder. So it's a little less aggressive, and I can also turn that down. But this looks like it's a scale brush that is pretty intense and I'm seeing if I smooth it, if it can give me something that I want. But again, that doesn't really look like something that's gonna be useful for me. Let's try scales D. I might be able to get some information out of that. That's definitely possible. But not super sure about that one. Scales E. Uh, Again, kind of a same type of situation. I'm seeing like even if I overlaid them, just exploring with what these brushes do. Let's do fish scales. I'm feeling this one needs more resolution, so I'm going to go ahead and high res that. And you'll see it does have kind of this pattern of fish scales. It's kind of emerging. There's potential that that'll be useful, but you see how much it's like moving around the surface. It kind of just looks like, I mean, that might be a starting point for us to have some scales. So we'll kind of keep that fish scales one around. Uh, fish scales two. This one looks like it's almost what you would use on his arms. Pattern. I don't think that's going to work for his face, but we could use that later for his arms. Uh, e. Oh, okay. Now this is a really good one that would go on his arms. If you look at Bosk's arms, they're very specific in their shape. Uh, so like if we kind of came down here and like did this, we could probably get some really good effects with that, right? illustration. I would spend a little more time on it, but overall pretty close. So that's a good one to have. For his head, it might work in some areas, but it's so, like we might be able to get some of these smaller details. I'll uprise one more time. This could be kind of nice, right? For kind of what we were talking about, like in these areas. So we that one was fish scales B. We're going to remember that. Lizard scales. I've used this one a bunch before, actually. It's not too bad. Kind of the same idea. Snake scales is more like a roll pattern, which actually is pretty cool. We'll definitely be using that one. And then snake scales too. It's actually just the inverse of that, I believe. 
It's more like it's like a, a golf ball texture, which is kind of the opposite. All right, so let's get started on this. Uh, the other thing I want to bring in is uh, some alphas. So if you've never used alphas before, what I tend to use is the standard brush. So I'm going to hit three to go to my standard brush. Alphas, you can import your alphas here. Uh, I'm going to find mine, which I thought I had them in here. There we go. So I'll have this uh, folder called alphas, and you'll see that they're kind of broken down into different types of skin. And so I just so happen to have a scaly skin folder. This is a bunch of PSDs. I can select them all and hit open, and you'll see it'll open them all over here. When I open this, it'll if I hover over these, you'll kind of see what they are. And it's basically photos of scales that have been turned black and white. And these will be really great for us to get some really large detail patterns, but they might also be uh, a good place for us to, you know, bring this in, bring something like a, this, the wrong subtool. You can see what we'll be able to do is be able to kind of drag them in. But the nice thing about using an alpha is you can also drag and kind of place it, and we'll get some really crisp and quality details like that. So I guess the first question when we start detailing something like this, you're going to start on a character whose whole head is covered in scales. Where do you start? That's the first thing that I've always had trouble with is, you know, what's the first mark you make? If to me, it always feels or has felt uh, a little odd to like have a sculpt that's relatively clean and then just start like dragging and dropping things onto it. So what I like to do is I like to do a pass uh, by hand first. And what I mean by that is you can make a layer for this if you want. I just, I use, I like to use save files. So I'll save and then I'll save and I'll save and I'll save. Uh, but what I like to do is just kind of come in and do one pass by hand first. And that'll also help guide, guide the direction of it so that I'm not just randomly placing things. And we had talked about this kind of being uh, maybe the, the pattern for that. So I'm looking at my reference here. I'm also kind of looking at you know the iguana that we have up, uh, looking at a bunch of different kinds of things. And uh, I'm going to start kind of around these eyes. I think I want this area here to have some sort. I'm going to turn this, this uh, damn standard brush up really high. I'm just going to start sketching. And this is not intended to be, um, you know, the final version. This is more or less me ideating on where things could go and kind of just blocking in some potential lines. I can obviously fix any of this at any time. So just kind of getting some of these big shapes in, also exploring what those shapes could be. You know, when you look at some like different scales, sometimes they have like this type of a pattern on them, right? Where you almost start doing like these types of shapes. Uh, when you look at other ones, sometimes they're just just circles. Sometimes they're like almost like an octagon and they have very clear edges to them. So here I'm, I'm trying to create some sort of a pattern that for me is going to create a nice line through here. And I'm also going to sketch in this line. And I'm not afraid of being a little over the top right now. Start doing the same thing up here. You know, I kind of like the idea that maybe there's like this line that comes across. I like this to be broken up. A couple larger patterns. And I'm really just sketching across the surface. There's this random bug that happens in ZBrush where it creates lines across your surface. Uh, so I try to avoid that so that there's not just like random things shooting around. But using the form I already have, I'm kind of tracing it, trying to get something. This area I'd like to be a little tighter, so I'm actually just gonna sketch, I'm just doing like this shape. Just very lightly to get some detail in there, and that'll end up being wrinkles. But like we saw in a lot of the, the lizards, uh, it could be a really tight uh, scale pattern. Now the nose for him has traditionally had a very uh, large set of scales, so I'm gonna start doing that here as well uh, and blocking out these for the mouth.
go all the way up. It's a little intense. Can I go here? Maybe like something here. Now, if you're an illustrator and you don't necessarily want to go to the you know the most detailed version of this, uh, a lot of what I'm doing here is probably going to be close for you because if you zoom out, this is going to be enough for you to paint on top of. So feel free to stop here if you only are interested in you know getting just kind of that starting point. And it's really just about sketching at this point and and not being you know one of my fears that I always had when I started out. Uh, I started out sculpting was how do I how do I not mess up what I already made and so often that's a tough that's a tough one because you know you can um, see how see how big these should be this is gonna be a challenge um, you sculpt and you sculpt and you spend a lot of time and you smooth the surface and then you smooth the surface and you keep smoothing it and trying to make every every not iteration but every level of this character um the same like quality meaning like it always looks like it's well done like it always looks like it's nearly complete uh, and i think for me that was actually one of the more challenging things to break away from is allowing yourself to have the model be or the subject whatever it is uh not be as resolved as it's been before you know having it i'm just loading up the previous one So we have it. So this is before. Allowing it to be a little bit um, messy and trusting in yourself that you'll be able to fix that. I like this idea of having like a bigger set of scales like right here. And then all through here, I actually want this to be like tinier stuff. So I'm just making some squiggles. And I like the idea of some of these being much larger. Uh, by the way, if you guys have never been to a Nomen Art Jam, thanks today. Um, and as you're here, if you've got any questions, please feel free to shout them out. I'm happy to try to answer them. Um, we also have our Adam Hartel, one of our recruiters here at Noman, is here in the chat. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask, ask, and we can point you in the right direction, whether that's for Noman programs, uh, Noman's admissions, anything like that. We're happy to, happy to point you in the right direction. All right, kind of getting that lined up. Do the same thing on these teeth down here. Or sorry, the lower lip. And this is just really blocking it all out. Using reference... And just trying to be loose, I think, is the number one thing that I'm really trying to do. There was a question uh, from Vladimir from YouTube. It says, you want to work as a character artist in your dream studio, but there's no openings in this position. The only position is, say, prop artist. I've applied for it, and I got a job. Is it possible to transfer to another position within the studio? Is that a common practice? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, it is a practice that happens. Uh, it's not always incredibly common. Um, you know, I think one of the challenges that you would have, you know, if it's a dream studio and you want to work there regardless, then I'd say take that job and do it anyways, right? Um, you know, if whatever it's Blizzard, CD Projekt Red, um, Riot, whatever your favorite game company is, right? 343, Bungie, like whoever. Um, if you're wanting to work for them regardless, you know, and you don't want to go to another place, then sure, if you've already got an offer for that place, I would, I would do that. Um, but yeah, it can be a little difficult to 
to transition within a company. And that's because typically a company, you know, a company has a, at the end of the day, it's a business and they have things to do. And so if you're asking to say, hey, you know, I, I want to transfer over to this other department, what you're really kind of saying in a way is like, I, I'm i um, wanting to do, I want to take away from this part of the company to add to this part of the company. And that can be a bit of a hard uh, conversation to have sometimes. So it, it is a, a common practice. I've seen it happen quite a bit. And especially for people that have been at a company for several years, um, it doesn't usually happen within a year or two years. Uh, it's been, it's people that have been there for quite a while. Um, so I guess it depends. It is possible. I've seen it happen a lot, especially people coming in and out of the QA departments at game studios, um, you know, getting into design positions, getting into art positions is pretty common. Uh, especially if you can prove to your teammates, prove to your company that you are, are somebody that works hard and is valuable and all that, then it yeah, absolutely is. But SK Ezos, for this project, yes, I did start from scratch. So again, I'm just kind of sketching this out, trying to find out where some of these lines can go. And this is obvious, like when you zoom in, it's very sketchy. This isn't really creating scales right now. I'm just trying to create the idea, both for me and for creating a sense of flow for the sculpt. Um, create an idea of where things could go and how they could lay down. So I'm going to cover the rest of this head. And you know, this stuff, I think, is going to be relatively large back here. And we're not crazy high on this head. We're about 800,000 polygons, which is high, but it's not insanely high. One of the things I noticed from the iguanas and stuff that I was looking at is whenever a lizard's mouth opens, that there's uh, a lot of lines that kind of go this way. right? And the scales seem to kind of follow in line with that. So I'm just going to draw some lines like this. And even like this, there's kind of this continuation of a line like here, like to keep happening. Just kind of get some of this blocked out. Again, the first pass is by hand for me. And uh, in a way, it's kind of like, you know, I was saying before, like trying to mess up the surface. If you've ever had like, you ever had like a new pair of shoes or like a new something you purchased and you like really don't want to wear them because you're really afraid that you're going to like mess them up. Right. We've probably all had that moment. Like I'm going to scuff my shoes. I'm going to like something's going to happen or um, this is like intentionally scuffing your shoe. This is like, you know, marking something with a marker that was pristine just to, to, so you don't have to worry about getting messed up. Right. Now that I've kind of got this, we're going from here, from here to here is where we're at now. So we're not really getting into the detail yet. We're just sketching that detail, but just kind of doing this makes it so it's a little easier to. Um, you know, start start with those next moves. It also makes it more intentional, meaning like all the designs, all the shapes we're going to end up making, we have an idea of what we want them to be. We have an idea of the size we want them to be. We have an idea of the direction that they should be going. Whereas if we don't do this or don't spend a little time doing this in advance, uh, it can be something that kind of gets lost. It'll it, you can just coat the whole thing in detail without too much thought, uh, and that's because uh, doing this stuff in ZBrush is fun. You know, detailing is fun in ZBrush. Uh, adding adding pores and and tiny tiny scales is enjoyable, uh, and so you can kind of get lost in it sometimes. And so I'm going to take some of this stuff here. I don't know if Bosk has like ears like a lot of lizards do. I don't think many of them do. Maybe we'll do like a little section that's like here. Kind of 
work around that. I want to be like crazy obvious there. So at this point, we're pretty much near the end of this little sketch phase, and then we're going to get into dragging some details on the real thing we're all kind of looking forward to, right? And again, this is like, you can see, I'm just like nicking up the surface. I'm creating some direction, some flow to that. And at a distance, it actually starts to work, right? And that to me shows that it, that this is working, that the overall idea of what we've got going is actually working pretty well, um, and which is good. It's really good. And that's exactly what we want. So um, let's continue now with getting this kind of a second pass of details done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the standard drag brush that we have here. Um, changing it to drag rectangle, and then I'm going to load some of those alphas that I had. So again, these are all different types of alphas, and uh, I'm going to load up some of the bigger ones and see if there's something that has, like this, you can see some of these have larger shapes in them. And there's a couple of things we can do here. I'll show you guys a cool little trick in a second. But once we find a good one that's got some big shapes, just kind of going through all these. I like how this one has like a very uh, has a, a kind of a flow in it, an intentional flow. This one has some nice large shapes in it. I'm going to drag this out on the surface. If I drag it out here, you'll kind of see what it looks like. So this this one looks like this. So it's got some of those bigger shapes that I'm wanting. Just straight up drag it right here. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time, you know, I might not want to get into the middle right now. But I see that I, I'm going to try to position this in a way that it angles with the previous flow that I had. So this is before and this is after. I'm going to keep doing this a couple times. Now you can use masks if you want. So something that I'm not wanting to have... Get details right now is this. Not wanting to get any details on this. Maybe see if it goes better upside down. Starting to get other areas where this is starting to be affected. Kind of like that upward direction that it was making of that. So I'm going to keep that if possible. Before and after. Um, different ways to optimize the scene for renders in Maya uh, Forever Saint is asking from Twitch. Yeah, there's all kinds of different ways to do that. Uh, it really depends on what you're looking for, though. Um, you know, poly, poly count, texture size, amount of lights, amount of you know rays. There's, there's all kinds of different ways to do that. Uh, it would really depend on the scene that you have. So just adding in a couple quick ones there. And the nice thing about getting these in is you know, you start to get some of this detail in, right? This is the before of that, and this is the after of that. And these photos do, these photos which these um, alphas are made off, do add quite a bit to the surface, and it's pretty cool. But the thing I want to come kind of come back in and do in some of these is I'll probably want to sculpt on top of this to enhance it a little bit. I never consider adding a, a, a alpha as being the final bit of this of the skilt it's just you have to do a little bit of work on top of it when you're done almost always so i'm gonna 
clear that mask. See if we can get some of these shapes in the forehead. These aren't really working for me, but they might work over like on the side of the head or something. Now, one of the tricks I wanted to show you guys was how you can use a morph target to do this. Now, we've already done the ones on the, the forehead, and that's fine. But if I go into here and I hit morph target, and I hit delete morph target, apparently I already had one, and then I hit store morph target, which is right here, it doesn't look like anything happens, and you won't, you won't see anything happen until I actually use the morph target brush. let's say I find an area that I like. Like, this is interesting. I like some of these shapes that this is creating. I'm going to angle it so that it maybe aligns a little bit more with what I had kind of been talking about. All right, so I kind of like some of those details there. A little heavy in some spots. So I can go into B, hit M, and then I can hit O from my morph target brush. What this is going to do is if I switch here you'll see there's kind of a camera a and a camera b now camera a has all my detail camera b has none of my detail so while i'm on this one i can use the morph target brush and it looks like it's also using color and i can actually go back to what the previous sculpt was so if i like this big line that it's created and maybe some of the texture it's created but not all of it i can go in and delete it more or less i can delete it at least Then I can come in and I can keep doing the same thing. So I could delete my more target, store it again, do a drag rectangle, see if any of this is working for me. I think some of these lines that this is creating is pretty cool. Like I'll keep doing this maybe a couple times on this part. And then I'll go into my morph brush. I can see the difference before and after if I want, and I just brush out the areas I don't like. So I like the big lines that it's creating, and I even like a little bit of the texture that it's creating, but I don't like all the detail that it's bringing across. I want it to be a little, uh, a little, a little bit more rest. Start to see how that kind of comes across. And then we'll delete and we'll store again. We'll keep doing this over and over and over. I like the, using morph targets quite a bit because they create a, a real level of control that you don't really get in a lot of other ways. And I'm also able to use really large alphas. Like for example, I just put that big alpha there, which I think is kind of working. Right, but now I can say, okay, maybe that was cool, but I don't like maybe all the detail it put over here. Maybe some of this should be gone. I want to have a little bit more control in a certain area. Let's do this with some of the areas here on the, the face and the lips or these eyes. I like some of these shapes that this is already creating. Now, here's one thing is the morph target only works on one specific level of subdivision. So if I come in and I say, oh, this is looking great, but it would really like some more detail here. If I go up, you'll see that goes away. Can't use the morph target brush anymore, at least not in the same way, right? You see there's no morph target to go to. So I'll have to undo. At this point, I'll just delete my morph target. I'll go up a subdivision level, and I'll store a new morph target. And then I can come back in, and now I can add my details, and you'll see how nice and crisp those are. So I'm dragging the same one over itself several times, which I think is starting to create a pretty cool result. Sometimes I'll spin it around and see if that creates a better result. Uh, but I kind of want to get rid of some of this stuff that's happening in here, for example. 
Some of the details fine, but I don't want to get it all there. I like what's happening here quite a bit though. We'll keep doing this, and at this point, I can also start dragging in a lot of these little ones. So because we have this form that we had, you know, from before we had sketched in, this is the previous one, uh, all the little tiny little details and that kind of like the nicks I had put on the surface, um, what that really did is it allowed me to to have a surface that is, is kind of messed up, right, basically. Um, but I can now... Uh, put these little details on it, and it actually works pretty well. So I'm using the same, exact same pattern that I had used before. And I'm occasionally spinning it, occasionally trying to get it to align better with uh, different parts of the underlying sculpt. If it doesn't align well, uh, I just erase it. Trying to see if I can get something to work well for that little cheek area. I think that's kind of working. You can see the before with all these really crisp details and this afterwards. Uh, we got a question from Paddler on Twitch uh, who, uh, who's asking, what are the differences between texturing in ZBrush and texturing in Mari using bump maps and displacement? What which is a faster process. Um, the difference in, I mean, I guess the question I would ask you first is, are you asking about like doing surface detail texturing like this? Uh, the difference there is obviously, you know, what we're doing right now is um, more of a sculptural detail. Uh, so it's just a little different in that way. Whereas something you would have in, in Mari, you know, it's going to be more of just a purely only a bump map, so or a displacement map. Both can be done, and both can be effective for the same thing. I've seen them used both used. Uh, it's neither one is, in my opinion, particularly faster. Uh, I have seen a lot of people do this type of detailing just in in things like Mari uh, or just in the program, and that works seems to work really well. So I think it's kind of going to kind of come down to your personal preference for if you prefer sculpting the details or if you prefer texturing the details. Keep using this. This alpha that I'm using is kind of serving me pretty well. I want this to be a bigger shape though. Oh, that's kind of cool. This to me is why it is important to have those larger, those forms there already. If you already have those forms, making you know, all those little happy accidents that we're starting to kind of see uh, happen, they happen by themselves, right? I don't have to do really anything at all for that. So now we can see if we can try to get some of these bigger ones to work. Kind of working. Come in again with the morph brush. And I can use this kind of as like an on off switch to see like if I like something or not. I'm 
to come into some of these some of these scales that feel like they just have a little too much information on them, like they're too detailed. I'll either smooth them or I'll use the Morph Brush to get rid of that information. Right now I'm not using the default scale brush, I'm using a drag rectangle with an alpha. Work, so we're going to try another angle. That one's just really not wanting to play with me, so I'm going to have to figure that one out in a minute. When you're trying to get a very specific element, it can take a little bit of time of trying to get the right, right. Um, oh, that's okay. The right alpha at the right arrangement. So it kind of gets there. Uh, yes, yeah, sculpting the details in ZBrush will definitely add more polys. Um, but you can, you know, I think you would never render a poly, a model of this amount of polys anyway. So you would either be um, using a displacement map that you're getting out of ZBrush or you're getting out of uh, another program uh, if you're going to render this in like a, a real pipeline. Turn off symmetry here, and I'm just going to sculpt by hand some of these little details. Around the nose, around the nose here, I'll turn symmetry back on. Just so some of these can be a little more close. And we'll get some of these last little bits here. And I'm just using the Damien standard brush. I'm just kind of carving in. And this last little front part of the lip, I'm not super happy with because I think it's just uh, too symmetrical. So I kind of want to turn that off and just try to get it to be symmetrical, at least or appear to be, but it doesn't need to be. So I'll just kind of sculpt that in a little bit and go from there. So as you can see, kind of what we've got already uh, is getting there. Like this is the before and this is the after. You can start to see a lot of these details uh, starting to pop in, which is great. Um, this is starting to come together. Some of the big shapes here are starting together. Uh, and we can still come in with some of the other brushes that we had explored with. So I think we had looked at the snake scales as well. So this is a brush that does uh, kind of looks like this. You can go over itself. You can try to go over itself. It seems to work better. It has like a, a pattern that almost like rolls next to itself. For me, I've found is really good for these types of areas. Or even like transitional areas like this. You'll kind of see the difference of like something that feels like it's got a lot of information here, like something that's got you know quite a bit of of direction and and pattern to it. Whereas if I start putting this pattern next to it, it doesn't really. Uh, it kind of works, but you really need to find a way to transition it into that. Otherwise, it feels kind of fake. You can put it in there occasionally. You know, maybe for these lines that I had talked about before, like this could be a good point to start blocking this out. Let's kind of maybe get some little undulations on the surface. Oh, this is even the wrong head, isn't it? Oh no, I just have the colors. 
the colors are different. So I'm going to select this color. I'm going to go to RGB and I'm going to go color fill object so that it should all get colored that, but it didn't because the top is colored this. So we need to color that in this material. Then we can go back here and that makes more sense. Sometimes I just switch around matte caps, so if you ever see me just kind of popping around, I'm doing that for several reasons. Some of it's to see uh, what the surface is looking like. You'll notice I have some matte caps that are very matte, uh, and then I have some matte caps that are very shiny. Not this shiny, but something that's like more of a of specular reflection to it. And what that's really good for is to be able to actually kind of evaluate the surface. But this is starting to get there. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to grab some more of these alphas. And you'll see even like this scaly skin, uh, I would prefer to use this alpha right, versus this down here. So you can get the same thing. The brushes are effective, but just because they're effective doesn't mean you should always use them. That's kind of my thought on that. Like I would rather come in and say, like, okay, I know the direction. Oh, asking this thing the direction this is, should be going it's kind of like this I think that size of scale works so I'm just going to do that several more times This is a common uh, issue I see with uh, beginners when they get into detailing their work is I don't think they spend the time to really place the detail. You know, I think coming in, and it's really easy to come in. Like I could just quickly coat this thing in, in scales right now, like in 10 seconds, it's not hard, right? And I think that's where people uh, get into trouble is doing it because it's easy and not really thinking through you know, what the direction or what the reason for doing it is. Not having the control, I think, is part of it. This way. So you see even in this one alpha, I can coat this whole neck here, which is great. But I'm spending a, quite a bit of time uh, trying to line them up so that they're the right size and they're the right direction. And that way, you know, at a distance, it reads considerably better. But especially up close, it's going to feel like those scales have an actual direction. They have an actual pattern. So now my job is to figure out how I'm going to transition these. Because I have them here, and I'm just going to maybe in some of these areas where there's a lot of smaller scales. Like I said, I wanted this to kind of be one specific type of scale and then kind of another type of scale down here, which is kind of what we're figuring out now. So I know I'm going to try to remember what this one is called or what one it was. Is it this one? All right, so 30. We'll have to remember, Scaly Skin 30 is what I'm using right now for all this next stuff. Let's try to get a transition. Let's see what some of these other patterns look like. You'll see some of them have like uh, different deviations in them. Some of them will have more bigger cracks. Obviously, we can use that for certain things. I want to try some of these. This is kind of cool. The idea that there might be some larger scales in here still. I can always again come in with that morph brush and erase things. So if I don't like all those areas, get rid of them. That's a key thing, I think, again, that, that uh, new sculptors don't really pay attention to is just because 
you know, a, a alpha or a detail can put detail there or is putting detail there. It doesn't mean you have to keep it there. So I can keep this surface and then transition it even though the rest of it wasn't there. All right. Uh, Aquatics, I see your question. Uh, I'm going to try to answer a bunch of questions when we get them uh, here in the next 10, 15 minutes. So I'll, I'll answer your question soon. And to me, this is kind of zen. Like I can spend, like you can and should spend a lot of time trying to make this uh, look as good as you can. So I'm seeing I'm even trying to line up the scales to be like the right size with it. That's a very important element as well. You know, if you've got some scales that are tiny, some scales that are big, some scales that are tiny, some scales that are big, you're going to create a pattern uh, that's not really realistic. Right, and that's not the point of what you're looking for here. This is starting to come together for me. I think we've got a, a good starting point here. You know, this is not a hundred percent, but we're going to spend some some hands-on time there. Kind of move it along. Knowing that this character, you know, doesn't need to have his entire head covered. For my illustration, I'm likely only going to show the front of him, so I don't know if I'll spend a ton of time on the back today. And I'll probably do something relatively quick for the neck. Like I think this is a nice pattern we can use for that. So just going one at a time. Being conscious of the size, but not necessarily being too anal about it. Trying to align it. So I can. If something feels wrong, I'll adjust it. We did say that maybe we put a little ear here, so I'm going to carve out that. Let's try another alpha and get something else in here. This is an interesting one. Let's see what this does. Oh, that's incredibly strong. Even though it's really strong right now, I'm just dialing it in to see, like, if it were not that strong, would it look good? And I think the answer is no. Some of the alphas you'll find are have like a lot of extra detail in them and they can end up being a little busy. if it works if it doesn't work it doesn't work i don't spend too much time on it uh, i don't want to burn time trying to force or trying to see if i can really you know like i said force uh something into working it's not worth the effort if i don't think if i really don't think it's going to work This one feels like it just needs to be way less intense. More than that. 
I'm kind of liking is that this is adding like a little level of detail to it, but it's also not taking away from all of the upper stuff in this alpha. I'm going to come in with morph again. Kind of clean up some of these or add some shape to some of these. It's getting there. So you can see the uh, after of what we've done in the past hour or so to, well, I guess I'll turn that, that off. Add a subdivision or two so it can be at the same level-ish. And you'll see this is before and after. So we're getting there. Now, there's a couple things that I'm already going to call out here and that we're actually losing that's actually making it in some ways look worse. Um, so I'm going to turn on, like, pull it there and see what that looks like. And things that I want to keep in mind when I'm doing this right now, I've got my, a good first pass. You know, I've done my first general noodling pass. I have some areas here that I should probably do one more pass on. So maybe we'll just quickly, 30 was a really good alpha for us. So we'll just kind of do some large scales in here. I said I'd do that ear. I'm not sure I'm going to commit to that. Let's see if we can find something, if there's like anything with a circle or this is a good starting point. Yeah. Finding alphas that have direction in them can be a really good way for you to kind of do, you know, a shape or something to, to guide that. In rather than out, but that's okay. Get ourselves. All right, 30 was the one that we've been consistently using. We'll keep using that if possible. Maybe a couple of little spots over here and then we'll keep, we'll move along into the, to the next phase of this. All right, so we've got a really, really solid first pass here and I think generally it's starting to look good. Uh, and I'll go ahead and we'll transfer, you know, we're about an hour and 20 in now, which means uh, we're going to start doing some, a little bit of Q&A. So I'm going to start answering your questions if you have them. So p please uh, feel free to chime in in the chats, uh, whether it's in YouTube, Facebook, uh, or uh, Twitch. We are doing questions across all of those. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Um, and uh, I'll try to try to get to them best I can. Um, First question that I'm seeing uh, was from Aquatic, and you're saying it's looking nice, but you don't have much experience with 3D sculpting, uh, mostly use clay, and the texturing being so instant is really remarkable. Would I recommend a program like Blender to get started with the kind of a process or jumping straight into ZBrush? And another second question would be, is ZBrush good for doing inorganic things like hard surface architecture, et cetera? Um, I think that if you're interested and it, first off, if you have a lot of experience in clay sculpting, uh, I would highly, highly recommend using ZBrush as your first digital sculpting package. I think it's going to feel the most like clay. Uh, and there are free version. There is a free version called ZBrush Core Mini, which is limited in what it can do. Uh, but you'll at least get a taste for the program. And I think that's kind of what I would recommend for you. 
Uh, second, yes, ZBrush can do hard surface. There's some specific hard surface tools that it that it has created or that Pixelogic has created over the past several years. And you can make all kinds of stuff. Um, it is, in some ways, I've seen some people do really, really incredible things with it. I'm not as comfortable doing hard surface in, in ZBrush, uh, but I've seen, like I said, people do super stellar stuff. So definitely, definitely possible to do that. Uh, let's see, we had a question. Uh, BMAG art, no, I was not using uh, the default scale brush. Uh, that was the, I was using it for a little bit, but I've also been using the um, so a set of alphas. We're using drag rectangle. SK, SK Ezo says, what is what is the difference between voxel sculpting and a subdivided one? Uh, voxel sculpting adds details typically where you need them. Uh, and polygons are a contained or subdivided polygons are a contained mesh that you're you're adding detail to and you're removing detail to. That's the main difference of voxel and subdivision. Um, do I have pointers on the depth, brush depth for alphas? Uh, you just started playing with that function. It's really sensitive. Um, I don't use the brush depth all that often, all that often, which is what it is, is in here. Each brush that you'll see, like uh, for example, like the standard brush likely has its own, they'll have their own depths already. Uh, basically it kind of works with like the, the surface. I don't really use it that often, to be honest. I just use the existing brushes. Um, let's see, uh, Kevin, hello, hope you're doing well, man. Hope your new uh, classes are going good this term. Um, Let's see, is this a character I made up or something based on something out there? This is a, a character from Star Wars called Bosk. Uh, he's one of the six bounty hunters from Empire Strikes Back. And then uh, Byron from Facebook is asking, what is a good way to bring uh, more characters to life and, and to bring more characters life to eyes? Are you asking um, how to bring more life to the, like the eyeballs themselves? Or are you asking... Um, just try to bring more life to a character. Well, we get some more questions and I'll do some more question and answer today. Um, I'm going to show you guys what kind of what I was talking about, about now what I'm, I've got my first pass in now what I'm missing or what have I messed up basically. Um, notice here we're having some big forms, right? Big forms here big forms here, so even some wrinkles that have started occurring. And once we start adding those details, they uh, they start to go away. And we really need those because that's the primary form of the surface. This is what's going to make it read from a distance. And that's part of why this character starts to read or doesn't read as well once you get a little further away. So we're going to get those. Um, you're asking about good ways to bring life to the eyes. There's several different ways. What I've done here is just add a little bit of sculpt and added a shiny material to it. Uh, like another area, another thing, for example, that I could do is I could just paint them. So I guess if we pull up an example of this character, I'll show you what his eyes look like, and I'll just kind of attempt to do a quick paint job on them. He's kind of got these horizontal slits with black irises. Movie version. There it is. It's a little bit of orange, a little bit of black in there. So what I'll do is I'll just paint really quick. Uh, that switch to RGB. We'll switch to just alpha. Turn off this, and we'll just maybe make like a black color. We'll give this that. Paint it. Same time, which is what I don't want to do. We'll just go actually full black here to get the initial shape. Kind of got like a little bit of a goat eye, I think, going on, which is like, well, goat eyes are like two kind of combined in the middle. But I kind of like how he's got this little slit that happens. But one good way is to just paint them. Uh, another way that you'll see quite often is to actually sculpt them like you would in a traditional clay sculpture, which is uh, where you would have like an eyeball like this, and you might actually sculpt in to create the shadow. Look, this is not going to look good when I turn this off. But and sometimes you'd see in traditional clay sculptures they would even like sculpt the highlight in to that. Um, you know, like 
you could see that that would be a way to kind of provide some some life to your sculpture. Not definitely not for meant for this character though. Uh, so I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna start bringing in this color, but I'm also gonna uh, color pick and maybe get a little bit more of this orange and make a little bit more saturated. Add some, some detail there. Do that one more time, maybe a little bit more orange, more saturated. And this kind of put in here. I'm going to intentionally trying to get some gradations here. Then I'm going to come back with this red that I already have. Maybe a little darker version. Over all that. Orange to spread a little further. Over with this. I'm already using the, a shiny material here. Uh, but now what I can do is I can kind of come in and now I'll paint like a really crisp line. You can play with your focal shift if you don't want to maybe make that a little crisper. Adding more subdivision levels as well. If you want to go full anime, you are more than welcome to and paint in your highlights. But a little bit of paint job on an eyeball can uh, can go quite a long ways. So, like, let's say we just decided we want to paint a little white. I find that kind of helps a little bit. I was on Soul Purr from Twitch is asking, you find that your alphas don't stick to surfaces with some depth variation, like the center of the drag is smooth. If there's a slight fold, I am I'm missing something. Uh, I think what you're saying is that there's kind of a fall off to the brush. The inside has more detail and the outside doesn't. And what that means is if you're going around a surface, it doesn't always wrap around the surface and it's not really intending to or it shouldn't be intending to so maybe that's maybe that's what you're uh, seeing there um is it possible to complete final topologies for characters like your boss in zbrush it is uh, there's topology tools in zbrush which you can totally use um they're good uh, but I think that you'll likely have better results in another program. Just going to add a little bit of a smaller set of scales here. I can still use my morph brush to kind of control the, the shape of this kind of feeling like it's missing some details in there. All right, and we'll kind of get that color back. I think this is starting to get pretty close, which is nice. Uh, how many times is necessary? How many, it sounds like the question that David is asking from Twitch is, uh, how many rounds of feedback are necessary? Because um, you can always improve. Typically what's gonna happen is uh, you're gonna just run out of time. It's really what it's gonna be. So it's get get in as many rounds of feedback as you can before time runs out. Um, somebody's asking. Okay, Wirt from YouTube is asking if you have any if I need any advice for aspiring technical artists. Uh, aspiring technical artists, that's a good question. Uh, I think for technical artists, the thing that I would always kind of recommend is just to 
really dig in and do research, uh, really understand like what, you know, get into tools, understand like to what kind of, you know, how you can improve a pipeline, how you can improve a process. Um, I think that's going to be something that'll really um, suit you in the future. All right, so this is our before and this is our after. What I'm going to do now, uh, this is since we've kind of done our more or less second or this is our second full pass of detail, is I'm going to go in and hand sculpt for a little while. So I'm going to turn off this and I'm going to hit my damn dam standard, Damien standard brush, and I'm just going to start sculpting. And I have the intensity up relatively high here. And what I'm going to do, like I'm missing some of these bigger folds that we had before. So I'm going to go down some subdivision levels. I'm going to try to bring those back in. I'm at a lower subdivision level right now. And as I go up, I'm going to keep slowly going up and adding in, and kind of tracing and working with the detail I've already sculpted. So you can see I'm actually sculpting around individual scales here. So whereas before, like we'll do a quick uh, time lapse, I guess, but like from before I was doing this, it gets a little flat, right? Having trouble controlling the timeline here. It gets a little flat. And so me adding in those these sculpt lines here is actually going to add a whole another level. I may have gone a little intense on some of those details there, but you'll see what I'm kind of trying to get at, which is I want to bring in another level of detail. It should follow the existing level of detail. I would really want to highlight this ridge, for example, on these, on the, the eyes that I created. I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring my clay brush and I'm going to create a little bit of a sharper plane on this. So I'm really not afraid of kind of getting in here and just sculpting down to this individual scale level and trying to control it in a way that makes it feel um, as as good as I possibly can, you know? So I'm gonna come in as, as we always should, save another copy of this, and take a second. Cool, I'm gonna load up. I don't know if I had saved a recent one. Looks like I had not. So before and after. Just coming in and doing individual uh, little bits of detail here. And we're going to spend probably another 20 or so minutes on this. So if you guys have questions while I'm detailing what I'm doing, uh, again, please feel free to ask. The eyes, for example, I haven't really touched at all. And what I would really want to do is kind of get into some of these really tight details if possible. So I'm going to find one that's got a really small detail pattern. Something like this is a good starting point. Hey, thanks. I appreciate that. It's getting there. It's a long process getting these scales in. So these little details, those scales I'm not a huge fan of as I'm trying to put them in they just look lumpy and especially around the eyeball like I really want it to feel uh, like it's organized I want it to feel like it's uh, a, a specific like almost ring or string of of uh, scales like this is nice like see how tiny those are and how organized those feel so I'm going to try to get the next ones 
as I lay out these next strips. to work with it. I do the same thing up here. All right. If you guys have any more questions, please feel free to ask. Um, there's one question from YouTube. Uh, Yetsin is asking, or Yetkin is asking. Uh, let's go in the wrong direction. What is the, basically asking the difference between Mari and uh, ZBrush for this type of detailing. You can do this type of detailing through a displacement map. Uh, I've seen a lot, that's definitely a more common technique that's been happening. Uh, for me, I've kind of always just been more comfortable sculpting. And so I, uh, I prefer to do it this way. Um, Mari is a, is a texture painter. So it's not a sculpting program, uh, but it is really good at, at doing detail work and um, all that kinds of stuff. So, uh, and just, it's, it's a really excellent texture painter where you'll have a lot of control and you can paint it really high fidelities and, uh, for somebody who's more comfortable with texture painting, it might actually be a little easier to work in a program like that versus trying to sculpt all this detail. So I'm gonna actually remove, using the morph brush, I'm gonna remove the details from the inside of the eyelid because insides of eyelids are just raw skin as that sounds but it's the truth and so i don't want there to look like there's like scales in here Looks like uh, you're having a different type of issue with your thing. You're saying the detail shows up on the outside of the brush. The center is smoother due to the height. Huh. Does it, Alpha doesn't see anything above a certain depth. I would wonder what brush you're actually using. Uh, the brush settings, like the smooth settings or the depth settings sometimes uh, can be a little strong. Uh, and if you're using a clay brush or a build-up brush, uh, it might, that might be contributing to part of the issue you're having. Uh, do I start thinking about the rigging yet? That's the issue then. Sorry, yeah, you're using clay. I'm using the standard brush. Clay brush will fill depth. Let's just as a quick example, uh, clay brush versus any other brush. So we'll smooth this. created a really big peak or valley here. We'll do both. We'll create a valley and a peak. Right. Uh, if I use the clay brush right here, you'll see as I go across this, it's going to fill the valley here before I do anything else, especially if I start sculpting across here. I go in there, it fills that completely. Right, and especially if I go over here, it's going to hit that peak. It's not going to go over that. If I hit down, if I'm doing alt, it'll demolish that before it hits anything else. So the problem that you're, you're running into is that you're using a clay brush for detailing, whereas you should be using a standard brush for detailing. Um, boss, yes, that's his name. Uh, rigging, I'm not going to get into rigging too much, so it's something I kind of think about, but most of the time I just think about posing and what kind of issues that I'm running into. Uh, Johnny from Facebook, this is ZBrush that we're using today. All right. Uh, I think that's the bulk of the questions. So we're going to keep sculpting away for a little bit. If you guys have questions, again, feel free to ask. Uh, if you do have any questions about Nomen, uh, whether it's Nomen's programs, Nomen's offerings, any of our classes, uh, I'm happy to help answer those questions. We also have uh, some of our recruiting team and our events team here as well. Uh, who can help answer those questions if you've got them. So again, feel free to, to ask anything and 
we're happy to help you out the best we can. All right. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I was doing detailing. That's right. So we're going to detail a little bit longer, but I actually want to get into some painting. It's doing so, showing some of the cool things you can do with painting. Uh, so we've already kind of got this idea of, of this, what this character is going to look like, right? Um, what we're going to do here is use some of the details uh, that this has already created for us to paint. So I'm going to go to our, our zebra, or sorry, or turning my standard brush back into a normal brush. Turn off uh, intensity of any, any type. So I'm not sculpting. Just going to turn on RGB and I'm going to color pick our guy here. All right, I'm going to have a kind of a red background color. So I have this color and then I have another color that you can't see because it's not working because it's the same color. I'm going to go into uh, masking. Under masking, you're going to see all these masking options. And there's some cool options here under mask by cavity. If I hit mask by cavity, what it's going to do is it's going to create all these little lines here. Basically what it's doing is it's taking all of the recesses that are in this model and it's masking them. And I can create an intensity of this. I can play around with the profile here, right? And every time I mask by cavity, this might change the way that it's actually uh, masking, right? I think the default is like up here. You can play with this. You can get the intensity of this, figure out what, how, how intense you really want it to be. We'll stick with this for now. And you can, of course, blur it if you'd like. All right. For me, we'll go back to two. Mask by cavity. And it's going to get this. I'm going to hide this mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint with that red color, just as an example. And what you'll see is it's coloring the surface. It's not actually going to color any of the details in there because it's all masked. So if I invert my mask, inverse, hide, I can start coloring the cracks or the crevices of my character here. This is really awesome because it's really cool to be able to do this. But the great thing is it's so easily accessible. So let's say we do what a traditional lizard would be, right? And your average lizard is going to have typically darker colors on the top and lighter colors on the bottom. So I'm going to select here. And I'm going to color pick. And I'm going to just paint. Right now there's no mask. I'm just going to paint a lighter color here. I'm going to do it, instead of doing it with that, I'm going to do it with a spray. The spray by default might have color in it. You see how it's creating this color variation. I don't really want that. So I'm going to turn down color to zero. And then I'm going to turn this up. You can spray with any alpha. So if we want to spray with something that has scales in it, we can. Uh, I'm just going to use this uh, brush here. I'm just going to kind of get this in. Maybe we'll get a little darker color. Just kind of get some modeling in here. OTT modeling. Try to get some of this. I'm going to bring in a little bit of a warmer color here. intentional. I'm kind of just overshooting some of these colors. Maybe get a little bit darker, a little bit more saturated here. Yeah, a little more blood red. That feels like it fit the character a little better anyways. Overshooting this very intentionally. It's a little clown makeup y. We get some warm colors in there. Come back to this, maybe this lighter color here, and start modeling in some of this. And I'm going to pick a darker color. We'll go saturated, maybe. Yeah, that feels nice. I'm going to kind of start spraying this. I'm not going to use this one. I'm actually going to use, um, there's a default alpha in here that I like that has these kind of veins in it. And this one can create this sort of a nice texture, and it works pretty well with uh, organic and scaly characters. Make the top of his head kind of this darker color. Right now this looks ridiculous, and that's okay. 
get to the, the point of this in just a second. As you've kind of, oh, geez, I don't know what this brush is, but I destroyed his head. Um, the matchmaker brush. But as you can kind of see in what we've been doing with all the detailing of the scales, it's a lot about, about layers, layers and layers and layers of detail being put on top of themselves. As I kind of come over this stuff, I have a default skin color for him, which is this kind of tannish. And uh, I'm going to start going over the top of it. Pushing those colors back so that even though that those colors are there, uh, they're they're not necessarily all the way up front, right? And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring down uh, by one way I'm going to work with this. I'm going to turn on that mask by cavity again. What you'll notice is this is going to color the surface. If I color right now, I'll be able to kind of create using that the colors that are already there. I can keep areas. Um, with that underlying tone. And this is kind of part of the example, right? Is that I can paint and say like, okay, if the underlying surface of this character, you can do this for all different types of characters. Let's 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 quickly do one example, right? I'll, I'll do this and say, if this character was lava, if this character was made of lava and we wanted to show the lava underneath, right? We could make a really bright orange and we'd say he's bright orange right here, right? We could mask by cavity and we could hide the mask, choose another color, and we could show the lava cracks coming through those cracks, right? That's kind of an a quick example. This character is not made of lava. What we're going to do is we're going to have some of that, and uh, we're going to just kind of sculpt or paint on top. I can have this darker color, and I can have this brighter color, and all other different types of colors. I like picking some of these colors sometimes, and... Uh, I'll, like on the bottom of the character, I'll create a swatch. So like I'll have this color and then maybe we'll take this and we'll get a little bit of a, like a bluer version of this, right? Maybe that's a little too blue, but we'll go a little more desaturated, right? Maybe that's something that would be useful in, in the eye region sometimes, right? Maybe not for a cold blooded character, but um, choose like a green. A green would be nice to have like some variation in that. I sprinkle a little bit of green up here and here. All right, get some of this in there again. And I have this default color on the bottom, so I can always come back to that. So let's go back to our masking by cavity, hide our mask. I can turn down the intensity here on RGB, usually to 50. That just makes it about half. Now what I can do is I can kind of push back and forth from this lighter color that I had to this darker color. Turn this up a little bit. We can start pushing back some of these colors. Now, the underlying colors are far too strong right now, right? That's something where I think we're all aware of right now. The easy thing to do is just invert the mask. If I invert the mask, I can color those and they can go away as well. Now, what I might want to do for those darker colors underneath is kind of add a little bit of, you know, especially in scaly characters or something with a lot of detail, a little bit of like a dark, uh, like almost like a, a shadowing to it. Now, this is going to be too much, right? It's way, way, way too much. But what we can do is we can get a nice little base and say, let's set it at like 5%, choose this darker color and try hitting fill object. We can keep hitting fill object over time and you'll see that this is going to build up. Right, right now it's way too heavy. Right, you can see it kind of go away over time. We can use that as another way to, to add this kind of detail in. So if the red is too strong, maybe we want to get in some more of the shadows under the eyes. Maybe we want to get some of these crevices up here.
I always have my default color. If I just want to generally just push the tones back. I'm hitting V. V switches these colors over here on the left. I'm switching between a lighter color here. Even that kind of looks nice. Maybe if the crevices are a lighter color. Inverting my mask quite often. Like this little bit of a pattern where even the dark, maybe the dark parts can be. Um, Uh, for what I'm doing, uh, Jan from YouTube is asking, would I bring this into Substance Painter or would I stick with Poly Paint? For now, I'm going to stick with Poly Paint. Uh, I definitely could bring this into Substance, and that's not a bad idea. Uh, but for me, Poly Paint is, is pretty uh, accessible, meaning it's pretty easy for me to just use um, like at any time. And so what I like about it is that it makes it a little simpler to just use as a base, you know, even if I'm only spending uh, 20 minutes, like I've, I've only spent 15 minutes on this head texture, which is not amazing, uh, but it's a, a decent starting point. Let me get this white one back. Uh, it gives me a really nice... Mask, making sure I know what I'm kind of looking at here. You know, if I want to bring back any specific areas of like light or dark, I can always do that. You can bring it through the shadows. You can bring it through the surface scales. There's all different kinds of ways to do that. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a lot of little texture variation. So yes, before I went pretty crazy with the greens and the blues and the reds, especially, right? Uh, but once you start having everything in there at once, what you'll notice is it starts to blend in to be decently, a decent result. So if we go to here, what you'll see, this is what we've actually painted. So you'll see all these little variations. Generally, there's a lot of red still here. There's a lot of green still here. There's a lot of red still in here. But the overall tone that we've been painting is still kind of this tannish color. Right, and we have these big stripes of of air of tones, like the dark, dark, bright, bright, right. And so the thing that's nice about using these techniques is that it makes it easy to to kind of come in, you know, like if I can now clear my mask, maybe even turn this away from just being turn this back up. Use this like as an airbrush now. Come in and just kind of generally get everything to feel a little bit better. But I still have all those little greens and blues, which start adding. They're a little out of the norm, maybe some of these, but they do add uh, a nice color variation into your texture, right? Whenever I was working uh, on a professional project, that was always something we would try to do. Is otherwise the the colors just get really muddy. They get muddy. They they lose interest. You know, they're not very interesting at a certain point. Uh, and it's nice to have. Just kind of like a kind of background color to fall on. I'm kind of creating a little bit of a, a little bit right now of a, get this color again. Like those eye, tops of his eyes are this color. So at this point, we are almost uh, two hours in. So as you can see on the little overlay here, we're going to start working on our next project for me uh, and then kind of reveal a little bit of what that is. I'm going to just quickly color these teeth because they're so ridiculously white. Uh, I'm going to use just this tan color we already have. 
intensity is very low. And then I'm going to choose this tongue. Do this. So we'll show the full model here in just a sec, and we'll kind of get ready to, to bounce into our next project, kind of explain what that is, show what that's going to be, and it'll actually be the last piece of my Fan Art 6 that I've been working on over the past several months. That's good enough for the distance. At a distance that'll read the way that I kind of wanted to, rather than it just all feeling like it's, you know, a single color, which is kind of what it was like this before. And there's the other ones. Cool. All right. I do want some of these. Bouncing back and forth. I feel like I got a little bit of that out of the way. So I'm going to go back in, mask by intensity, get some of this back in there. Some more color variation in these scales. Go ahead and save. All right. So we'll go ahead and start showing everything. There's a lot of different little pieces. Uh, this character has almost entirely been built on stream. So if you're interested in watching this, uh, go ahead and check through our our YouTube videos um, or our Twitch streams, and you'll be able to see the, the bulk of, of watching this character kind of come together. Is there a Battlefront 2 Bosque? I don't know. Is Bosque in Battlefront 2? I don't know that. Um, yeah, so this has basically been built all on stream, and this is where we were at the beginning of the day. So we had a sculpt. I think I even have previous ones in here. I do. So at the end of the previous stream that we worked on Bosque, this is where we had gotten to. I had been really struggling with the head shape for a long time. Wasn't really happy with it, um, you know, kind of moving forward. So, yeah, I think that, you know, this is a project that I'm, I'm getting close to wrapping up with. So I'll open up my, uh, to kind of show you guys, I was here, then I got to here, and then now we are here. So you can kind of see the process and a little bit of the progress that we've been working on. All right, so going into Photoshop, these are the characters we've been working on. So almost all of these, except for IG-88, have, have been built on stream. Uh, and so you can see processes of each of these if you're interested in that. Boss will obviously be filling this hole here. Um, so we'll start uh, maybe next stream, maybe off stream. I've been doing a lot of painting on stream and rendering on stream like I did for these three pieces. Um, it's going to be a lot of the same process. If you haven't seen that before, uh, check out one of the previous ones. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with how this is starting to go. I was really struggling with him for a long time, and I think his head is finally coming together. He's a goofy character to begin with. So, you know, uh, it's strange. Uh, IG was not made on stream. He was made off stream. He was actually made a little while, as, while ago. Um, but I wanted to add him into this because eventually I want to have all six of the bounty hunters. It's kind of my end goal. So uh, trying to get these two to a level that I'm somewhat happy with. And I'll probably just do a, a short... I don't think I'll go below uh, this shot. But yeah, beginning to here. Uh, cool. So th we're going to save this because this is going to be the end of, of Bosque for this stream. And we're going to jump into uh, our next character. So we'll do like a quick little screenshot maybe just so he can look goofy as he always does. Um, in here, copy. Looks like there was a weird glitch in the screen, the stream there. So hopefully you guys are all still here. Oh, my 
Photoshop just closed. We're having some odd tech issues all of a sudden. We'll put this guy in here. I've been doing this uh, three by one size, which I really enjoy, but it's really difficult to work in. I was not expecting it to be that difficult to work in. We'll just kind of flip this guy. But, uh, the <laughs> uh, this is honestly one of the most difficult characters I've sculpted in a while, just because he's so odd looking. So there we go. We'll end up wrapping this one up at some point. And I'll have a proper illustration. But for now, this is where we're at with them. You know, maybe something that's like just again, I like trying to work in this, but like if he was like, you know, this size. Maybe a little I think he's shorter than IG88, though. I think IG88 is the tallest one. So I kind of like I don't know. We'll figure it out. He'll probably be like this size doing something all right and then we got to do the last one and so the last one um that i've been wanting to reveal for a while and this is actually the whole reason i put this character at the end was so that i would eventually get to doing all of these is uh one of my favorite characters of all time uh which is oh, i spelled it wrong robocop oh that's the caps in here wow just a there we go I'm going to work on RoboCop, which is going to be my next character uh, that I'm going to work on. Uh, so we're going to actually start that today. Um, and yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get started with that. And the way I wanted to start with that is actually going to got some reference up here um, for that, which is in my folder. RoboCop reference. So classic RoboCop is kind of the direction I'm going. Not necessarily like a whole... A uh, new version of him, uh, but you know, there's a lot of good things in here. So this is kind of you know the classic one that I'm thinking, maybe attempting to do a, a slight redesign. I did kind of like this version in the movie where he was still silver and black, and there's some cool elements here. But we're gonna definitely stick to a lot of the iconic stuff in the face, uh, you know, kind of stick with that for sure. So the way that I actually wanted to start is by making kind of the face part and then we'll wrap the, the helmet a little bit around that as well so what we're going to do is we're going to jump back into zbrush here we're going to open up this and actually one of the tools that our projects that i'm going to work on is the head planes which are right here there's a bunch of these head planes and there's basically z mesh z remeshed ones uh, i'm going to open up the 128 i've already saved this so i'm not worried about it going away we have one of these. If you guys have never used one of these or a head planes, I highly recommend using them uh, as a base mesh. Uh, basically because they give you a lot of the this, this simple stuff to start from, right? Like you don't have to worry about uh, getting the head proportions correctly. You don't have to worry about doing, um, you know, it, I can just kind of start. And so for me, what it's, what's going to be great about this is I can probably just like mask this thing off you know, invert this, you know, make sure my symmetry is on so those ears down into oblivion and then like start sculpting. And I can probably get a relatively quick RoboCop head out because he's basically a sphere. Like here, we'll do the, the really quick bad version there. And it, this is, this is, it's completed right there. Um, but I really like this because it's so simple and easy to use. Um, that I really, really recommend it. So let's start sculpting. Uh, obviously, RoboCop, one of the number one things is, uh, yeah, and Mike Trop uh, is going to be the face, right? So we got to have, we got to have some lips in here. We don't really need to see his nose. We're not really interested in that. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started on that. So uh, if you have any questions about any of the previous process stuff, any questions about, uh, you know, things that we've been working on, please feel free to ask. Feel Please feel free to chat.
uh, but otherwise we're going to start sculpting some lips uh, we don't need to see his eyes right you know this again the reason i like using these is because you can pretty quickly uh start sculpting just for examples sake start sculpting in this is still super intense Uh, features and it doesn't take you too long to get them into a place where it, it starts to feel somewhat normal turn this off there we go turn this back up Figure out our jaw. You know, the, this is why it's so great to use one of these heads. You can just almost, especially if you're sculpting a human or even a humanoid, it's just so simple to just quickly, quickly add in details or, you know, start getting the proportions in. You can wildly change them if you want, obviously. You know, if you want to do a cartoon, if you want to do something entirely different, you can but it gives you a really good starting point. So uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. I just kind of wanted to show you guys how, how you can use that uh, very quickly for your own projects. Before I get too sucked into this. Um, all right, so let's sculpt, in, sculpt some lips. Now, if anybody's a RoboCop fan like I am, uh, you would know that Peter Weller is the actor for RoboCop, and Peter Weller has very specific, like, it's a very specific lip shape. Um, so I'm I'm gonna have to figure out what pose I want this to be in because I feel like it's probably just a good idea to just sculpt it in the pose or close to the pose that I want it to be in. So there's a couple of these, but he always kind of has the same like pursed lips. Uh, I love this guy's face back here, just like the sc the screaming face, uh, and just how happy like this woman is. She's so smug. Uh, so we're gonna go probably with this one, and I'm gonna have this up on my other screen. Oh, part man, part machine. Uh, RoboCop is definitely in my top five movies of all time, uh, for sure. So if you guys have any questions about RoboCop, I'd be happy to talk about those. Um, but what's what uh what's some of uh, your guys' favorite movies of all time? What's your favorite um suit? Your favorite like mech suit of all time? It can be in anything. Spaceballs. <laughs> Excellent choice. Have a preferred style that I like in facial looks? Not really. I tend to go a little more, like somewhat stylized. I'm not uh, super realistic. Is not like my favorite mm -hmm. thing to sculpt, just because it takes so long. Looks like he's got a mustache right now. Maybe that'll be my version of RoboCop with a mustache. Master Chief. Master Chief is great. Robotech out there. Big fans of Robotech. Mech suit or just mech? Either way. Iron Giant. Excellent. Excellent robot. One of my favorites for sure. I've been... Uh, Thinking about getting, uh, some tattoos recently, and I'm thinking about a robot sleeve. Choosing what would be on there.
This is not great, but for a couple minutes it'll be a good starting point. Trying to imagine it not having any of this. It means it might be better to just not have any of this. Pacific Rim Jaeger, yes, there's a big project I'm planning to do after this with the Pacific Rim Jaeger, or uh, in a project inspired by the Pacific Rim Jaegers, for sure. Giver, Giver's a great one. 40K, yeah. Could be good enough for me to start on that, I think. So let's just go ahead. I was gonna sculpt it. I'm gonna like do a duplicate of this, I think. I'm just gonna clip this into a little tiny piece. Now we're just blocking out shapes. This is not expected to be a RoboCop within the end of the hour. Anthem. Anthem had some pretty great suits. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the mech suits from StarCraft, the Space Marines. Those were big for me for a really long time. The Space Marines were super legit. I'm just going to do a quick coloring of some of these. So this is his head. This is his head. So we'll make this like white, I guess. White with a little, a little hint of blue in there. Then we'll get this one will be uh, like a dark one. And this one will just leave as just wait. A little blue, maybe a little too blue on the blue. Power loader, Optimus Prime, Titanfall Max. Titanfall Max were cool too. Iron Man. Iron Man's a classic one, too. Well, he is now, at least. Getting rid of elements of the sculpt I don't really need. I have all those base meshes there already, so if I need something to come back, I'll have it. 
I just want to just keep this part of this face. My favorite things are one of the real things that I actually liked about the new Robocop movie was when they showed like his body and it was just like his lungs, his lungs and his head was how that was really interesting. Right, so we're getting started on this guy, and I think we'll probably do something like quite a ways to go, obviously. Quite a ways. This needs to go way up. We'll do a quick little paint job here. You know, that looks bad. I get it. But I think it's going to be important to start visualizing the character. When a character that you, when you start working on a character who's a very iconic, meaning you know exactly what they should look like and most other people know what they should look like, uh, it can actually be difficult to work with them in a way that's purely form. You know, like if you didn't draw in his eyes, if you didn't sculpt in different elements of that, uh, I think you would see that it actually gets far, far more difficult to to do elements of the character right because you, you're just kind of sculpting in a way that's like like this like if everything is just this color you can kind of get the idea but if you're doing it like this you can immediately see like oh okay i can i can start understanding who this is um and that's in there's goods and bads to that you know sculpting like this uh with color on especially so early all these because it does kind of, it can set you up in some ways as well for failure because you're trying to do too much at once. You're not thinking about just simple starting points, but at the same point, it's also not too bad. Um, oh, let's see. Optimus Prime, I think I'm. Did they ever do. Is Optimus Prime in the new Bumblebee movie? Newish, newest Bumblebee, Bumblebee movie? I don't remember. I'd like to see a big screen version of like a, what the newer Bumblebee movie was or when it was a little more. Um, you know, what's the word? Not so busy. Optimus was in it. The very beginning. I don't remember. Could be a decent enough. His head shape is all messed up, but we'll get there. Can rebuild him.
I'm just going to sort of kind of sculpt it a little looser now that we've kind of got a just a starting point. It's not at all what it needs to be, but it's something. So we'll uh, zoom out, get one of these other images up. as more of his full body. Playing around with that. I'm going to use uh, a base mesh that I've used many times before. And I like using base meshes for bodies, especially just because it's a little easier to, you know, to start working, really. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a import, or I'm going to append first, just a, I usually use this, whatever this is called, a star. And then um, I'm going to import my base mesh. Base man, we'll give him feet. So here we go. I didn't want feet. I think I wanted shoes. So I'll import him with shoes instead of feet. I love 3D so much because you can run into so many little ridiculous things like big head mode right now. Uh, big head mode. <laughs> uh, yes. No. Um, just like random little things that me laugh every now and then. This uh, base mesh is actually from a, pro a modeling program, an older program called Silo, uh, which I don't think is around anymore. But they had a um, a couple primitives that were um, in the program, much like you would see a teapot, a square, you know, a sphere, a cylinder, all that. And one of them was this, which was just a guy um, like this. And I really like this one. It's very simple, very quadded out. Um, and I've used it on tons of projects. It's probably my number one most used base mesh. So I'll just delete the rest of it because I don't need, I don't really need anything in the head. I deleted the wrong side. I'll just start sculpting. So whenever I start a new character, I always like to try to block in the whole character as quickly as possible, uh, not necessarily caring about what the actual individual results are. You know, like, like does does this face look great? No. Does the helmet look great? No. Does the, you know, does the neck look great? No. But uh, being able to review the whole character at once is actually a big part of that right it, being able to to know how everything's working together because you could make the most beautiful top of this helmet and then start on the next piece but then you realize that it wasn't exactly the shape you needed or exactly the size you needed and then all of a sudden you're in this position where you're having to like basically uh recreate it over and over and over and over readjust it over and over and over and that takes up a lot of time to do that. And so it's for me, it's always easier to just um, 
you know, get all the pieces in there first before you really start doing anything. At this point, you can also, you know, adjust your proportions really quickly. I feel like he's maybe a little short right now. His torso is a little long. Uh, what I also like to do is spend this time setting up my scene. Uh, so I've already got the, the top built into several pieces, as you saw. Uh, but I'm going to take this. I'm going to make some poly groups out of this. I'm going to do it on this one instead. In case you don't know, polygroups. Polygroups are basically a way to organize your scene and to be able to select items. So I can select this quickly and mask it. I can select it and hide it. I can invert that. And what that does is it makes it very easy. For example, like if I want to mask the arms and say, I think his torso is maybe a tad long right now, um, I can come in and I get. Or if I want to come in and select just this and say, okay, maybe let's adjust the, the way that these legs are working or the stance. Makes it very easy. Scale is quite large, so I'm turning off dynamic. Kind of wish I had a, another loop in here. So I'm going into Z Modeler and I'm adding an edge loop here. I'm going to add another edge loop here. This is going to let me do it on my base mesh. Just give me just a little bit more definition in some of these areas. Robocop is a very specific, you know, if you look at his suit, there's a very clear line there. And that's what I'm wanting to get in this base mesh is kind of define that line a little bit. Um, Somebody's asking, um, we've got a couple. Yeah, silo, old school for sure, right? Um, yeah, silhouette is kind of the idea. Like we're seeing the basic shapes before we get in too deep uh, for sure. And then do I prefer doing low, all my low poly and ZBrush than copying, copying the sub tools to make all high poly? Or do you go just for high poly and then do a retop version later? Um, I like to do as it's it's a it's kind of really depends on the project you know certain things you know I think I've showed you guys before but I'll open up another another project that I'll be getting onto after this uh, which is going to be this one uh, Saticus while this loads uh, no it's not unusual to sculpt with perspective on uh, I'll be doing and working on this Jaeger at some point over the next several months, probably. So this character, for example, for your question of working, I prefer to work all in low poly, then make it high poly, then do retop later. Um, we will, you know, I showed you in one of the previous art jams, um, I'm just going to load up the scene because why not? Um, where would that be? Probably Twitch. Sorry, just loading up files. Uh, I showed how I, I would take this and we started doing some retopology. And uh, what we kind of found, or I was showing you guys, was how this is a, a concept sketch. So I, we worked on this piece and 
holding my mouse and my pen at the same time. We worked on my on this piece here and started to re retop it by uh, bringing it into Maya and then actually spending some time to, um, you know, just to get it to a better kind of, better kind of quality, really. Where did I put that folder? There we go. Uh, the concept sketch up until this point it will not be on on live stream. Um, the rest of it, I'm planning to make as much of it as possible on live stream. Yes. So as soon as we're done with our Robocop, who is so sad right now, uh, we will move on to uh, this character here. Uh, I have plans or I've had some plans to do a large scene. And I'd like to use this as an example for people to uh, be able to use where we can, you know, talk about different types of characters, different texturing processes, uh, different programs, how you would go about different things. Um, you know, it's kind of just a way to go through that. In the, one of the previous art jams, what we ended up doing was taking uh, this piece here and beginning to do some retopology on it. So this is retop in Maya and kind of just showing how, you know, to get like a nice clean result, how we would maybe dive into some of these details like you're seeing on this side here, right? And just really getting into what the, what the next process is part of this process is. So uh, we'll be doing a lot of modeling on this over the next several months once RoboCop's completed. And we'll be doing a lot of um, just general general breakdown of the process. So we're going to go through as much of it as I can. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a project that's going to take a really, really long time. Uh, so we probably won't spend too much time like, um, you know, you won't see every single hour of it there'll be big chunks where it's gonna be like and this part is completed and i worked on this over the night or whatever uh but yeah that's the next project that we're going to get to as soon as we are completed with um this one so we obviously just starting this one but we'll uh, get there All right, so right now I'm moving these pieces in because I want this to be um, part of him being more robotic. Robotic, robotic is um, kind of like really defined shoulder. So I'm just setting up my scene for that. I'm going to do it again. I, I went in and made a added an edge loop here. I'm going to add another edge loop there. And I'm just at this point looking at my uh, different different areas here, different pieces of reference. You know, his whole upper arm is much larger than his lower arm, obviously, as as our most heroic characters. We'll do this the rest of the stream. Got a little Judge Dread vibe going on right now too, which I'm totally okay with. Maybe we'll get that whole chest a little broader. Uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in following along with that project, I would recommend uh, you know subscribing on our YouTube page or our Twitch page uh, or Facebook. We we do stream live to Facebook as well, uh, so I would recommend doing that so you can either see when we're live. We'll be doing art jams pretty much every Wednesday uh, from ten to one for the foreseeable future. Um, so I'll be working on those. So occasionally, we will have guest artists as well, so they'll work on other projects if you're interested in that or or their own projects. Um, yeah, I'd recommend subscribing to that so you can follow along if you aren't already.
I'm doing a little bit of posing, uh, just kind of generally, you know, trying to get the uh, the body to feel like it's in somewhat of a normal position. Sometimes the base meshes when you use them, uh, it also fits the character. Like this character having like bent robot arms seems like it actually would work. These weird broken fingers that I did. To me, that's kind of a good starting point. And at this point, I'm just going to start sketching. So we got about 20 minutes. So for the rest of the time, I'm mostly just going to sketch on this character uh, and start blocking out uh, the shapes as you would expect. So if you have any questions, feel free to, again to shout out as always. Uh, if you're just joining uh, and you've never seen a Nomen Art Jam before, um, this is a Nomen Art Jam. We hang out for a couple hours. I work on a piece of art. I ask ask answer questions that are asked in the chat uh, and try to give as many tips and tricks and insights as I possibly can. Of course, since this is Noman's channel, uh, it's, our, it's a Noman Art Jam. If you have any questions about Noman, you're free to ask and we can get you in contact with anybody uh, regarding our classes or programs or anything like that. So please uh, ask questions. And if you have any, uh, if you have any uh, comments, concerns, feedback, uh, always let us know. We're always open to that. Last piece of reference up again. And see what I'm looking at over here. For some reason, it doesn't want to go to another image, which is very annoying. Something like this is a little better. All right. All right. So what I'm actually going to do, because I've spent a little bit of time, not a ton of time, but I've spent a little bit of time kind of trying to get uh, some of these lines like in the right position. going to add a subdivision level but when I add my subdivision level um, I'm not going to actually add um, I'm not going to let it smooth the mesh if you guys have seen me sculpt before you'll see that this is something that I do quite a bit meaning not letting it smooth the mesh Uh, so I'm going to instead of hitting divide right away, or you can hit uh, Control D to sub subdivide. Uh, what, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to turn off this SNT. I'm going to hit divide, and then I'm going to turn it back on, and I'm going to hit divide. All that really does is adds a level of subdivision before it does any smoothing. This button here, all it does is actually smooth the mesh. You can smooth the mesh, add subdivisions without smoothing it. And that's all I'm doing. So I might even do that a second time before I smooth it. And that gives it this really faceted kind of quality. And normally I think most people don't really prefer to sculpt like that, but for me, uh, especially in working in a character where I'm, I spent a little bit of a time up front using those extra polygons that I added to define certain areas of the character. Uh, what it's going to be useful for is now I can just kind of carve in, you know, like I know that there's a kind of an area here. This is kind of where that chest piece goes. I'm going to bring up this uh, collar piece as well. just gives it more structure. 
I'll obviously need to spend more time or, or just spend generally spend time. Uh, this will body forward, I think. Uh, spend some time doing a little bit more work on that, but it uh, it works. You know, when it's when it's faceted, you have to sculpt now to make it not faceted. I guess is what I'm saying. But I was going to sculpt the whole thing anyways, so it's not a big deal. Create this kind of color. I want to create a good intersection here. I think that right now his neck might be too long. From everything, especially all the reference that I'm seeing. I'm not going for a one to one interpretation. I'm going to obviously put a little bit of my own spin on it as it is fan art, but I do want it to be. To still kind of capture the as much of the character as I possibly can. So Nice thing about using an organized base mesh like we have here and not using a DynaMesh one is you can kind of come back in like I am now if you're having like, oh, I really want to just adjust this thing quickly, right? It's very simple, very easy to do that. Because this character is so much about color, I might actually start doing that earlier than normal. And what I mean by that is what, I, what you'll see is if I kind of stretch this out right now, he looks boring. But uh, if I turn this on and I start painting some color as far as like where I would expect it to go. What you'll see is it makes it a little easier to kind of, even though this is relatively simple and it's not a ton of information there, uh, it does make it a little easier to visualize what areas of the character will look like what. Just kind of visualizing that very quickly, and I'm probably going to do that even in here too. That's a good way for me personally 
to to use these color lines also as a way to, to work within designs. Sometimes when you have like a blank page, it can be a little difficult. Obviously, I'm doing fan art, so it's not a completely blank page. But uh, it is a nice way to to kind of start and say like, okay, like, what is this going to look like? How is this going to look like? You know, what's kind of the goals of some of this? And it's a, it's a good way to do that. For example, like I could take this. One of the things that they that Rob Bottin, uh, one of the, the sculptors or creators of the suit, tried to do with uh, RoboCop was to try to bring the this kind of negative space in his design, or attempting to create or uh, mimic some type of a negative space, so that the viewer would would think that because Peter Weller is a relatively thin person, and so he uh, was oh. Uh, he was able to kind of use the thinness of Peter's frame uh, on top of bulking out certain parts of the suit to make it feel like there, it could be less of a man in a suit. Uh, that wasn't really a concern too much in the 80s and 90s, like not making characters look too much like man in suits because it was also the only way that suits had really uh, been done before. But it is a, a very common request that I would hear now, like working on a character that you don't want. I don't want an alien. I don't want a creature. I don't want something to look like it was just a human wearing a costume, right? That's a very common th uh, thing that happens now. And this is how they were they were attempting to basically get around that then by creating areas that could provide negative space. A sculptor expert, yes, two materials can be added to one subtool as well as multiple materials, multiple colors. Carving that, but building that instead. blocking these colors out a little further. And again, the whole point of kind of blocking in these colors and kind of working in the round is what you would also call this, is so that you can quickly visualize uh, what the character is going to look like. So there's a lot of things that I want to fix on this. This is a very early version. And to kind of go back to a previous character, and I think uh, there are a couple different characters maybe. Um, you know, like if I pull open, this will be perfect. This is like the, the Abe Sapiens I did. This is the sixth version of Abe Sapien, right? Right, and then the final, final version of Abe Sapien was, uh, I save every every so often, but um, if I open something like, oh, I just had it. You'll see that it, it's sort of a, a slow but iterative approach where um, you can start, 
you can start um, relatively simple. And the point of, you know, at this point it was for Abe, it was getting in everything. So is he wearing shorts? What does his general body structure look like? Trying to understand what the gills are look like, trying to put in the facial features to understand how those look like. General proportion, general shape is really what we're looking at, right? And I think that's the biggest thing that we're kind of focusing on. So, and as you see here, elements of that are still there, right? But they're all far refined from where they initially were. Um, so the idea is here, what we're doing is, this is version one, right? I, I don't even think we've actually saved this. So we, as I say that now, I should most certainly save a version. Cool. So this is gonna be version one, and we're gonna keep building on this. But yeah, I think for the rest of the stream, or actually I might cut the stream just a little early. I don't know if you guys can hear the background, but my newborn son is very hungry. So I'm going to go help him out. All right. But for the rest of this uh, time, I'm probably going to start working on... Uh, this character, you know, next stream maybe we'll have be a little further. Hopefully, uh, I'll have something to an update to show you guys with the render for Bosk as well. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to cut the stream five minutes early today, and um, yeah, this is where we are. I'm super excited to be working on this character. Like I said, it's one of my favorite characters, so it's going to be a fun one to to wrap up. And uh, like I said, once we're done, we're going to move on to some larger, bigger projects uh, where, we'll, where we'll be showing more than just sculpting but also modeling and getting into texturing and uving and, and many many more uh parts of the process so yeah that's where we are today um appreciate you guys all joining very much uh obviously we'll be back next week from uh, 10 to 1 pacific time for another art jam so looking forward to seeing you all there and uh i'll see you next